All right, I thought we'd take a look at this little project. Now, I did not record the video of making the box and everything, and perhaps someday I will. But what I thought I would share with you is how we're going to go about making the drop down uh, bar top. So this is a wall mount uh, bar. Could be used inside, outside. Um, this is all made out of fence pickets, what you're seeing. And of course we stained it. Um, we used the Barathane. Um, it's called Aged Barrel. It's one of my favorite stains. I really like it. I wish it wasn't so gray. Um, I wish it was more brownish, but to me it looks gray. So, but at any rate, uh, it's got room for four uh, margarita glasses or, and that's, that's why I only put four there, is to make it big enough. I think it, you could have a four inch, maybe four and a half inch glass. So it could be a big glass. You know, I was thinking, you know, for a, a margarita glass, wine glasses, champagne glasses, whatever. Um, but it was kind of made in mind that it would hold a, a big margarita glass. And then what I don't have in here is I do not have my adjustable shelves. So I'm, I'm gonna put in two adjustable shelves and I'll tell you what guys, this little gadget right here, this little shelf pin gadget from a Craig is a really neat gadget. So it, it allows you to drill holes sequentially and it's got a little pin in here for registration where you put it in and then you can move it up and drill a series of more holes. And then um, this piece, this this little piece right here pops out so that you can put it up against the back and make your holes in the back as well. Um, you know, oddly enough, so the jig itself, um, the drill bit must be still in the drill what I'm guessing but anyhow they ha it comes with a five millimeter drill bit and this little registration pin but notice it's got another place for the quarter inch drill bit now mine didn't come with a quarter inch it only came with the five millimeter but when I go to buy pins sometimes finding the five millimeter pins are a little bit difficult um, but uh, I did find a big box of them at Home Depot the other day so I bought them um, but quarter inch they got all day long it's the five millimeters that can be hard to find. And of course, I have the five millimeter drill bit, not the quarter inch drill bit. So I'm gonna drill those holes um, for both sides. And then I have to cut a board for to have one adjustable shelf on each side. And then we have to make this door. And that's kind of what uh, I was just gonna show you uh, how to go about making the door. It's a real simple little project and, and uh, I'll just show you how, how that works okay so i think first i'm going to get all my holes drilled and then uh we'll take a look at the details of making the door all right i thought i would just show you this real quick so i've got a little spacer block here and the reason being is the thickness of this fence picket is only five eighths and we're going to need holes on both sides so on the on this side we're going to just offset the holes just a little bit and that's what that spacer does so this piece what i thought would show you so this piece is going to set up against our spacer block and that'll move these up five eighths of an inch but what i thought i would show you is this little registration pin if you've never seen this so you just put your pin in the hole we just drilled i i drilled up the fourth hole from the bottom and so now we've got that registration pin and now we can go ahead and drill the rest of our holes now keep in mind we don't have to have holes way down here because then you'd only have a shelf like that so that's why i came up on the fourth uh, the fourth hole and and i think it uh, must have been the fifth one i drilled right here and uh so anyhow so that's just a little tip for you but you can see how that registration pin works perfectly and now i can just continue the holes and then i would just turn around and move this spacer block over to this side and do the same thing and now i'm using my right angle drill here which makes it easy um, in this confined space so let me go ahead and continue on and we'll be back with you one thing to keep in mind, this registration pin can be put in wherever you want it to. 
So I think I just want maybe two, I'm gonna go ahead and put in two more holes here. And so the, the shelf could come all the way up here if they wanted it to. So I'm just gonna put in those two more, two more holes and then make sure I do the same amount of holes on this side in the same location. So now you can see we have our holes drilled. Now I did mess up. Pretend you don't see that. <laughs> I did mess up and uh, drilled an extra hole there that I didn't that I didn't mean to drill. But there you go. So they're all they're all lined up. And then on this side, you can see. They're all lined up as well. Now I should have probably drilled the holes before I stained, my bad. Uh, so we'll sand those down and then we'll touch up the stain. That's not an issue. But what I wanted to show you was that offset we were talking about. So you see how the holes on the opposite side will kind of be in between these holes and just worked out that way. Um, so, that is the fix for that. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get our other holes drilled in, get this cleaned up. Uh, probably go ahead and touch it up with stain and then look at the top, uh, uh, the, the uh, swing down door. That's gonna be our bar top. All right, so now you can see now we have all of our holes drilled, of course, and then I went back and touched up the stain, uh, sanded, all the burrs down from the drilling of the holes and then went back and touched up the stain a bit. So now we gotta make our door. And to make our door, we know that this piece here is 24 and a half, okay? And I, of course I did confirm that with the old tape measure. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make our door 24 and 3 eighths. So it doesn't leave us a whole lot of wiggle room. We're gonna, we're gonna hope that our box is nice and square, which I've done all the preliminary measurements. I think this is gonna work out fine. So we would take the, 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 the width of our box and we could drop it down an eighth, which is what I'm going to do. We can always trim it up if we really had to, but I think that'll work fine. Or a quarter. So, so you take your measurement, less than eighth, less a quarter. I like to use an eighth if I can get by with it. Like I say, um, we might go ahead and trim a little bit, trim it down a little bit once we get it uh, put together. But I think uh, it's going to work fine. And then what we're going to do is we're going to measure from the, the inside top down to this point right here, the top of this right here. Okay. And we're going to do the same thing. We're gonna, whatever that dimension works out to be on your piece, we're going to um, make it either an eighth or a quarter of an inch less than that. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at my cabinet here. See what the dimension is. So in my case, it is 33 and three-eighths okay so what we're going to do is we're going to drop it down to 33 and a quarter and then we're going to take that 33 and a quarter dimension and we are going to divide that by five and a half inches and the reason we're dividing it by five and a half inches is because that's how wide our fence pickets are so let's just say hypothetically, uh, if we take the uh, 33 and a quarter divided by five and a half, let's say it said something like 7.632 or something like that. Well, you know, whatever, whatever, it's seven point something, okay? What we would do then is we would say, okay, we need eight panels. So then we would go back to our dimension of 33 and a quarter in this case, and we would divide that by eight. And that's how wide we would rip each one of our fence pickets. Okay, I hope that makes some sense. 
So let me do some calculation. I'll come back to you and we'll figure out exactly what we're going to do here. Well, that's interesting. 33 and a quarter comes to 6.04 something. Okay. So essentially what it's saying is, is if our fence pickets are truly five and a half inches wide, we could probably get by with six full size fence pickets. That's kind of surprising to me, but perhaps we can do it. So the, what we're gonna do then is we're gonna cut six pieces that are uh, 23, in this case, 23, uh, and uh, this is 24 and a half. So I guess we'll do it uh, 24 and a quarter wide, six of them. So that, that'll give us just a little bit of play. Uh, is that what I decided or, or did I say 24 and three eighths? I don't remember now. I guess I said I was gonna make it 24 and three eighths. That's correct. 24 and three eighths. So we're gonna set our stop block on our miter saw to 24 and three eighths. And we'll go ahead and cut these. Now, just on a purely side note, okay? This is something that's kind of off the grid a bit. Something to think about when you're creating your project. And I really didn't think about it when I was doing this particular one, but probably should have, is that magic dimension. There's, there's When you're dealing with fence pits, fence picket projects there's a few magic dimensions and one of them is 23 and that's because we can get three 23 inch pieces out of one fence picket so this top board here is 24 and a half had we made this an inch and a half smaller then that could have been 23 now could we have done that i think we probably could have in this case and not, not lost the functionality of the cabinet. We'd still have room, I think between these four, we could we could lose, you know, a half inch or not even really three eighths of an inch difference between each cup um, and accommodated that 23 inches. But instead we had to uh, go with uh, 24 and a half, you know? So that's just something to kind of keep in mind uh, uh, 34 and a half if we want two sticks, 23 if we want three sticks, and then as far as making cleats, we could go two two and a half inch cleats, or we could go three inch and a half cleats, or we can just barely get three inch and three quarter cleats out of one with the fence picket. Okay, so I mean, it's just you know food for thought. Uh, uh, I, so I, I might uh, modify this in the final plan. I'll have to look at look and see how much material we're wasting as a whole um, if we need to make that cabinet just a little bit narrower to maximize the use of our materials. But with that said, let me go ahead and cut up six pieces that are 23 or 24 and 3 eighths. I'm sorry, 24 and 3 eighths. Um, and so you can see, because we won't be able to get three pieces, um, all these back pieces and all the pieces on the front, we're only gonna get two pieces out of one fence picket because of the width we have to make them. So we, if we, if we would have just made it the whole thing just a little bit more narrow, then we could, we could have not used near as much material um, because we could get three pieces out of it. So I don't typically mind because I have a lot of small projects I make with the smaller pieces, but it's just something I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep in mind when I'm making the final plans for this. Okay, let me get to cutting and I'll be back with you. That's a little crazy that that worked out so perfectly, but it really did. So yeah, so it, you don't have to trim these down at all. It fits perfectly, six boards. There you go. I planned it that way, but I didn't. Trust me, I did not plan it that way. But it works out good. Um, so I think there'll be enough clearance. Um, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a cleat all the way around here, to, and that will hold the boards together. 
And so I am going to get that figured out, how long the cleat has to be and so forth, and put all these boards together. All right, so we can see now that we have our cleats on. Now our cleats are inch and three quarter. Um, so we got three strips out of one fence picket. So I went ahead and just ripped a whole fence picket. We won't need all that extra cleat material, um, but at least we'll have it. Um, so, but before I go and put on the, the little cleat here, just to kind of finish the trim out, I want to make sure that this door will fit in the cabinet still. And so, um, you can see here, we just, we used a good amount of wood glue and then two staples per board to hold all these together to kind of make up that door. All right. And then when I flip it over, I'm also going to add some some additional staples on the back side. The glue that we put on there will do the bulk of the holding, but I think a few extra staples is not going to hurt nothing. Uh, give it a little bit more uh, support. So let's see if it fits. And then if it does, then we can go ahead and finish out the front of this. We'll go put our cleats on. And now this is going to get a custom logo. So I've got to get that done. And then once I get the custom logo on, it's just going to be painted black. Once I get the custom logo on, then we're going to go ahead and stain th this front and back before we actually apply it, uh, attach it to the cabinet with some hinges and chains and all that fun stuff. So let me make sure it fits and then uh, we'll work on getting that logo and the cleats put on. So we have confirmed that it does fit. So no issues there. You can see we have a small gap all the way around so yes so it's gonna fit just fine so now we can go ahead and put on our top and bottom cleats there's no more trimming of this that we need to do and then uh, i will get the logo made get it stenciled out and get the logo applied here all right so we've got our monogram logo for the bar and i'm using this real inexpensive easy liner shelf paper it has a removable adhesive. It's a duck brand product. Um, you can get it at Walmart. Um, I believe it's a five yard roll. It's 20 inches wide, five yard roll. So you can see it creates a good size logo. Uh, I'm gonna put the uh, last name on here. This stuff is finicky. It's, it's real thin uh, and it's a bit finicky. It doesn't like to stick very well. Now, I've not tried the same manufacturer's permanent adhesive liner. I really should uh, to see how permanent it really is. So, uh, this is a little bit harder to work with than the Oracle 631 that I would normally use, but I don't have any 631 on hand. So, it does not like to stick real, real well, but this isn't a super detailed design, so I think we'll get by with it. So, let me go ahead and get it placed here. And then uh, I get to paint it. Well, we did manage to get the logo on there. And we've, we've got it burnished to the wood pretty good. Now, once you get it off of the liner, it does stick to the wood reasonably well. But you just want to make sure that it's really good burnished all the edges that will minimize the amount of bleed that you have i did try to sand my wood somewhat smooth but i get impatient so there will be a little bit of bleeding but that just kind of adds to the rustic look anyhow so we're not going to stress over it too much but you do want to try to get your wood relatively smooth if you don't want a lot of bleed and of course make sure your vinyl stencil here is down on the wood really good so now we'll go ahead and give this a couple of coats of black before we put on our aged barrel stain there we have our black paint on there and we're just using a dollar store brush to do the painting and i must say i didn't have a lot of expectations um, but i don't see all the bristles falling out of the brush on my little paint job here so for a little paint job like this for a throwaway brush 
I'd say it's probably going to be okay. So we're going to let this dry. It's a little bit cool out today, but we do have the sun working with us. And uh, let's see, my watch says it's 60 degrees. Yeah, a little chilly. Um, but uh, I don't see significant progress. I'll take it inside and throw a fan on it. But we'd like to get two coats on here, I think, uh, and get it pretty dry before we peel off this stencil. It's only been a couple of minutes and it is drying nicely, you can see. But I wanna point a couple of things out if you can see it. See those little bubbles? And that, that's what happens with this uh, particular vinyl. So I think I've got pretty decent coverage of the logo with just the one coat. So when I think I got it pretty well decent, because of all them bubbles, the paint will tend to bleed right there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just leave it just like it is and go ahead and pull this stencil up. So I'll go ahead and just show you. Now the one thing you wanna be careful of because this, this paint is wet. So when we pull it, if you don't want the paint on the rest of your project, you know, you can't set it down basically. To see how it kind of flopped down there. Um, it, you know, the paint could get on the part of your project you don't want paint on. So just kind of be careful when you're when you're pulling it. But you could see when I was talking about that bleeding, it's going to bleed a little bit. But like I said, because it's kind of be a rustic finish anyhow, we're going to distress the name just a little bit when it fully dries. So not a big deal. Okay. So we'll go ahead and let it finish drying out and then uh, we'll just stress it just a touch and we're going to do that by hand just a little bit and uh, then we can stain the actual uh, door part of it. All right, so we have the logo done and I did, you can see it's just a little bit distressed. I just did that by hand with some 180 grit sandpaper. So now I'm going to go ahead and get it stained and I've got our two adjustable shelves. We've got to stain those as well. And then it's just a matter of putting on some hinges, some chain, and this little clasp to hold it all together. So those are the steps we've got left to do. So we'll just take it one step at a time. We'll get everything stained up and then we'll move on. All right. So I skipped a few steps ahead because I'm kind of in a tight time crunch, but we've got it stained out. We, you can see what we did. We put that chain there. Um, we got our, our hinges put in and there's a little clasp up top, which has this piece here on the door. And so when you lift it up, it just locks right into place. And there you have it. So, and I, I don't know, I kind of go back and forth putting knobs on these uh, because it does hold it in place and it is pretty easy just to grab that. Um, if you look at it, it's just a little, a little proud of the case. And so anyhow, it is pretty easy just to grab that little lip and pull it down. And there you go. And of course the case would be mounted to the wall. Um, either with a French cleat or just a couple of screws through the back of it. It's five eighths of an inch thick. Um, that would probably hold it up there as well. So I hope you got something out of this one uh, and you see the finished product, pretty straightforward. Again, we will have plans for this uh, in our Facebook store. Um, I probably will make a few changes in dimensions uh, to better utilize our materials. So I'll give that some consideration as I kind of reconfigure things a little bit. Um, and thanks for watching.